Hello, this is a Squarespace do-it-yourself tutorial on how to create a vertical rule, um, which is something that is insanely weird that Squarespace does not have out of the box. They have horizontal rules um, like this, but I don't know why they don't have a vertical rule block since it's something that's pretty common in web design and development and comes in really handy. Um, so I will show you how to create one. Uh, both a simple one where you set the height and a more difficult one um, where the height will be automatically calculated for you. Uh, so normally when you're separating like two columns of text or you know you have something over here basically you would just have um, a spacer block Oops, wrong one. spacer block which is what I have here. Um, but we want to separate those with a vertical rule, so it looks like over here. So what we're going to do is replace that spacer block with a bit of code and give it a div class vertical rule. Uh, you can use whatever class um, or ID you want. If you're doing just one of them, you can use an ID or whatever as long as it's unique. Uh, I like to use classes, that way I can reuse this um, and use the same, pay, same theming and scripting um, in multiple spots on a page or in different spots or whatever. But just an empty div as long as it's got some sort of identifier. Hit apply. Let's delete our spacer block. So it looks just like before except for we've got a big bit of code in there. Now we're going to give it some theming. So let's go to design. Custom CSS, vertical rule, uh, dot means class, hashtag means ID if you don't already know that. So we've got a vertical rule, uh, a couple of things that we're going to have to do for that. We're going to have to make it display like a block. We're going to have to set a width on it. Give it a color, and this would be a background. Um, and let's set a height. So that's one pixels wide, 60 pixels tall, gray background. Uh, but notice how it's butted up against this one and not this one. That's because there's padding around every Squarespace block, um, and this block is one twelfth wide. There's 12 square, square space columns. This is one column wide. So let's center it. Log to zero auto. That means zero from the top and the bottom. Auto this way. If we wanted to center it even more, we could go TM. Um, if we wanted to move it down in between the two blocks, we could go position relative top TM. So this will move it down. 2M is our um, letter height or line height. So this will move it down to. So that's a basic vertical rule. Increase the size. Bad thing is with this, let's go check it out over here. So we've got a vertical rule, but blocks change sizes. So now we've got whoops. Now we've got a really thin rule against two really tall blocks. Also, that's ungoing. So a couple things we gotta do if we're using this static block. First off, let's just do the static block and we'll make it get rid of that. So it breaks from three columns to, well, three columns, depending. This is a column mobile. To single column mobile, that's 640 pixels. I know that because this is a perfect template. I'm really used to it, but um, you can easily figure out when 
something is going to break by going to the page. Oops, wherever we can get a, oh, there we go. Header is 624. Double creep going. Where did it go? Let's see if I can get it. Nope. 624. Oh, right about there. Oh, 644, 640. So we want to go uh, media screen and there we go. So we need to go here. Create destination. Match this 640. So anything smaller than 640, that's screen. Um, we could go media all, and that would affect print and screen, but nobody really prints web pages anymore, so we're going to just go screen, display. So basically what that's going to do is we'll have it, and we'll have it at more than 640, and we got nothing at less than 640, it will just be a space. If you want to delete that space altogether at less than 640, you can inspect it, get the block ID, and delete the whole code block because there is 17 pixels top and bottom padding, also left and right padding around pretty much every square space block. Um, so you could get the block ID and either go padding zero or display none on the block. So that's how we make a really simple vertical rule and hide it on mobile. But it's not the best because it's tough to get the exact height. It could be too long, could be too short, too far top and bottom. So to get a fluid vertical rule, we're going to use some jQuery. And basically, we're going to go into Settings, Advanced, Code Injection. And this is where you put jQuery that you want to happen on every page, and also jQuery you want to happen in the footer. And I'm going here and doing it in the footer for two reasons. One is so that I can use my vertical rule on more than one page, and I don't have to repeat the code. But more importantly, we want this code in the footer because the height is calculated up here. And we gotta find that height, so we gotta calculate after. So we gotta go in the footer. And what we're gonna do is I've already figured out this bit of script, so I'm gonna paste it in there, but I'll walk you through it. So basically, this is saying when the document is ready or your page is done loading, we want to find out how wide the window is, so that's gonna set up our media rule that we just did, we're just doing it all in one spot. So window dot width, we'll find out what the window width is when the page first loads. And we'll set another variable of row height, and we're gonna find the tallest block in the row at desktop height and figure out how tall it is. So what I mean by that is we wanna find, this is our row, across this whole deal, all three of these. We want to find out what the tallest thing is because the tallest thing is always going to be the tallest there. Notice even when we get down, this one's still taller, even it's more sizes. So we can set the height based off this one. Unfortunately, in Squarespace, you can't set it off of, there, there's no specific identifiers that you can plug into for rows and columns and things like that. So we got to go off of how we find that block is basically look at which one's taller, inspect it, and I always want the block ID. So ID starts with the word block, copy that, paste it in there, and that's going to say, okay, find the height of the tallest block and make it into the variable that we can reuse in different spell zones for header and screen and footers. And then we're going to set up some logic. So we're saying when the document loads, if the window width right there 
is greater than 640, one thing a lot of people screw up on is they put 640 pixels. There's no need for pixels. That's already just a, jQuery just assumes that you're talking about pixels here. So if your window is greater than 640 pixels wide, then we want to set the height of that block that we did, our vertical rule. We want to set the CSS height in um, apostrophes, comma, and how tall do we want to set it? We want to set it to the row height that it's calculated up here. Otherwise, so we're saying if the window is not 640 or greater, or not greater than 640, you can do greater than or equal to like that. But if it's not greater than 640, then let's get rid of that vertical rule altogether. We'll just hide it, which is the same as our media query displayed on that tag before. So this will work perfect for when your document first loads. And I'll show what we're saying here. So notice this height is the same as here. It looks longer because we've still got the position top in our design. Style editor. Oops, not style editor. We have custom CSS. Window. We've still got this position relative top 2x. So we get rid of that. So we've got it setting the height of this block. But you'll notice that, wait, it's 20 pixels too long, or roughly 20 pixels too long. Oh, whoops. Uh, I believe that height set right there. So that was interfering. We'll want to get rid of this. We'll want to get rid of the height stuff that we had set before. Save. Let's come back here. Reload. Oh, so we've got a height that's exactly equal to our block. But Notice I said when window loads before, the height's not adjusted. We could reload at this height, we're going to calculate and set the height how it should, but we want it to be a little more fluent than that. Just because people might want to drag their window around like crazy. Who knows? So let's go back to our oh, oh. settings. Code injection, and we have to set up another function. This is one function, one window load function. And we want to go, okay, so we've got it done on load, but let's have another function where when the window is resized, copy all of this stuff, or basically repeat all this stuff. So we'll find out what the window width is, we'll find out what the row height is based off of the block, and if the window width is greater than 640, we'll set the height to be the same as this. Otherwise, we're going to hide it. So save. And, okay, so it calculates right. And now we're resizing the window, and notice how it's fluidly perfect. And then less than 640, it's gone. So that's how you would do a fluid dynamic now notice one thing it doesn't do that hide doesn't come back when you're resizing up here so we could go because it sets display none but it doesn't so we have to set another show because we're hiding it, which is different than CSS height. So we want to say, okay, show it, which is fine if it's already got a display. So we'll show it, bring it back down, and bring it back up. So now it displays when it should, no matter how people drag. It sets the right height. But what if we don't want it to be the entire height? Because that just seems 
really, really tense on the top and bottom edges. I want to bring it in a little bit, kind of give it some breathing space, top and bottom. So we can affect this height using that and another variable. So we can go variable, uh, and we'll call it. This is just good jQuery syntax to when you're using a variable with multiple descriptors to join them together, capitalize the second one. It's just how it's done. So min height, we're going to find the row height, home bill minus 40. So that's saying take this and subtract 40 pixels from it. Copy that back here. And then we want to set this to the min height and set up the row height. Back over here, make sure it's doing it right. Okay, so we've got it minus 40 pixels, but we want to center it. So since we know it's 40 pixels, we'll come back here and re-add our position relative top. Whoops, I'm doing that. Wrong thing. Okay, hitting the wrong back button. Let's do that one more time. Custom CSS. And position relative top pixel. And that will, in essence, center it because we took 40 pixels off. We just added half of them back. And it will fluidly adjust per the size, hide, and come back. And that's how you make a, we'll call that the advanced version of the vertical rule in Squarespace.